Welcome everyone, this is Yusuf and guess what? This is the season finale. And today's topic going to be about how to avoid bad clients. What the heck is clients from hell, hell, hell? Well, let me share this story with you. Maybe you already went through it. So for instance, you have an, a customer that you agreed on a project, whether it's a web development or online marketing or any kind of service and photography, and you outline every single steps, every single layout on how to process the project and your client agreed to it. Guess what happens after that? In the middle of the process of working on your project, now your client tells you, hey, guess what? I forgot to mention one thing. And this project from being 10 step, it will become like 20 or 30 or 40. So have you had that kind of experience? All right, so here's the thing. Before you get into the trouble of having a bad client, you need to learn a couple of tips on how to avoid them. First, make sure that you have a clear contract that explains every single step of the process for your project. And avoid those customers or those clients that actually don't read contract. Yes, I've seen some customers don't even read a single copy of the contract. What the, the, the okay? Make it simple, maybe five pages that talks about the information of the, your potential uh, customer. Uh, main key points like, you know, what is included in the project? Explain it simply. What is the outcome? What is the responsibility of the client? The fees, the 50% down payment and the final down payment and all this information you need to put on the contract and make sure that they sign it. But before they sign it, make sure they read it and understand it. Give a realistic time frame. You don't want to give them the exact time frame, but let's say if this certain project is going to take two weeks, tell them at least three weeks, just in case something happens. When you have a client to work with you, you have to look for the long term. You have to uh, get the best customer to work with so they can improve in their business, grow their business, and at the same time, you can also grow and continue having that great relationship between you and your customer. And if that doesn't work, then you have to let them go. And there's the right way and the wrong way. And the wrong way is when you call them, you son of a <laughs> No, that's not, the, that's not the way to do it. Don't be going around and telling other people in the community, oh, that customer sucks, he's freaking bad. That's not professional. The right way to do it, just email them and explain to them that if you did not get paid, you cannot continue the project. Uh, but don't leave them hanging there because you understand, I mean, they still probably need help. So if you can't continue working with them, you can refer them to another uh, entrepreneur that can actually handle that kind of client. But before you do that, make sure you explain to your uh, business associate the, the story and the relationship that happened with your clients so they would, you know, know exactly what's happening. If they can handle, they'll handle. If not, they don't have to. I've seen customers sometimes call me like, you know, you know, at midnight or in the weekend. Even though when I tell them this is my family time and they don't listen, my solution is very simple. Just ignore them. That's it. So do your best and be careful, but always make sure you take care of your customers and, and go above and beyond. If nothing works out, you can always let them go. And that is the beauty of running your own business. And don't worry about the so-called reputation. If most of your customers are happy, just focus on your happy customers. Now, if you experience any kind of crazy stories with your own customers or ex-customers, please comment below. Here's my normal voice. Once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones, you'll start having positive results. Uh -huh.